Hey, everybody, welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. It is I, Hosh Nasi, KI6NAZ. We already have a ton of people in the chat. How's Amazon Prime Day treating you? Amazon Prime Day has been pretty good for ham radio operators, particularly technician class operators. Very, very good deals. The GD77 was like 60 bucks. That's amazing. So hopefully everybody's um, checking that out. If you could, go to the Facebook page, join the Ham Radio Crash Course. I got a link there. And if you use my link, it doesn't cost you anything more, but it helps the channel out. So I'd appreciate that. Today, I've got a really cool chat. We're going to talk to Sterling Coffee, And the main goal here is to talk about youth in amateur radio, the state of youth in amateur radio, and what we all might be able to do about it. Uh, here's a little bit about Sterling. Sterling currently is an extra class license holder uh, since 2007. Well, I think he was licensed, so that's pretty awesome. He's now working in avionics and integration. Well, that's a that's a mouthful. Um, living in St. Louis, so that's pretty cool. I did want to mention one thing, right? So he graduated Missouri Tech. Uh, he was the Ham Radio Club president for 4.5 years and AWRL youth editor. Very cool. So one thing, aside before we jump, throw it over to him and talk about youth and ham radio. He said his favorite activity in ham radio is listening. I spend a lot of time on web DSDR just scanning through with a radio. I rarely ever talk or rag chew, but I thoroughly enjoy contesting. Um, so I'm very much the same way. I was a big advocate of listening first before ever having a ham radio. In fact, um, some of my primary listening radios are still my go-to PL660. I love this thing for shortwave and single sideband, just about anything. So big supporter of that. I love that. And I think that's kind of the newer generation's thing is a little bit more listening with our SDR dongles, SDR plays, RTL, SDR, all that good stuff. So, all right, without further ado, Sterling, how are you? Hi, good to be here. I'm really, uh, really great tonight. Um, super excited to talk about youth and ham radio. And we'll get the easy stuff out stuff. of the way first. Why don't yeah. you plug where you're at and where people can go to find so you? That's probably the easiest. You, you pretty much uh, hit the nail on the head reading off my website. Um, St. Louis, Missouri, <laughs> work in avionics and integration and, and that sort of stuff, developing electronics for airplanes. Went to school at Brawla. Uh, Joe Zero Triple E was my alma mater. Um, I say I got a BSW, but I say I got a BS Triple E because W Zero E E E is the uh, call sign of the club there. Mm -hmm. That pretty much set my ham radio life into motion. I had an internship at a radio observatory. I've um, I've been all over the place radio wise, and you know settled down here in, in St. Louis. My fiance Justin and my two cats Charlie and Abby. Um, nice. Where should I, people go to find you though, aside from your website? In uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Uh, what did I mention? My website is like my kind of hub. Like if you go there, I think you can find me. But I'm mostly active on Twitter um, in okay. terms of like ham radio sphere. My Facebook's like normally my like local friends and Instagram is something I've been getting more into because Snapchat like is just boring and dumb nowadays. <laughs> so. so copy that. So it's it's yeah. pretty much N0SSC wherever you want to go to find yeah, you, just right? Google it and there you go. Okay, very cool. Yeah. All right, so um, you and I talked recently. Actually, I think somebody else was talking on your behalf as you about uh, where were you? You were in Germany, is that right? Tell us about yeah. a little bit about that. My most recent trip was in, to Friedrichshafen, and okay. I went there to um, see what it was like. It's like Hamvention except in Germany. Right. In Friedrichshafen, Germany, south of Germany near Switzerland. And it's like 17, I think this year 15,000 people went because it was on field day. It was actually... The weekend prior to field day, or the weekend, a couple weekends prior to field day, normally it occurs on field day weekend. So since they had a day change, it was like a lot fewer people, but that means like there's a lot more room to run around. Mm -hmm. But over there is like Yoda, capital of the world, youngsters of the air. Um, and I went over there to get more inspiration on this project we're working on here in IRAU Region 2, which okay. is the North America, South America part of the International Image Radio Union. Three regions separated around the world and over in Region 1, which is Europe and the Africas. They started this program called Youngsters on the Air, which is the um, um, a, a program for youngsters, young people. Uh, over there they call them youngsters, but a lot of people over here are like, youngsters, aren't those like five-year-olds? Their age right. limit is around like 26, 27. That's a young person. And over here oh, you could wow. probably guess, you could probably say like even in their like lower 30s is considered young in compared to like the population of ham radio, right? Right. Um, but between the ages of 15 and 26, 27 or so, and a few chaperones between like, you know, you know, 
up to 40, 50. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one chaperone around like age uh, 58. Um, it's a camp. It's a week-long camp. And I went oh. in 2016 in Austria. And it's like... You go there, you do balloon launches, you talk to the ISS, you work satellites, you build antennas, you, um, you're, you're sitting in workshops every day learning something, and then you're taking that thing you learned and going and doing something with it. So, so you're like literally a ham radio boot camp, basically. Yeah, exactly. And it's a, yeah, it's a whole like it. week. It's like, it's like a Boy Scout camp, um, right. you know, or a scout camp, if you will. Sure. And... Um, you learn a lot about radio technology, and we even learned, we had people who um, work for LTE companies out there to talk okay. about like you know how does LTE work, how does the cell phone work, and how does that compare to what you know about Morse code and and BPSK and FT8 and these kinds of like modes. How can you like see the path forward to what's currently happening you know today in terms of like radio technology? So it's not just amateur radio only. It's a little bit broader than that. It's it's right. kind of the whole umbrella effect. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and we okay, sorry, go ahead. Oh, and they even go beyond that. Like you, we went on hikes and we went and toured like um, a couple mountains, a big ice cave, a castle, and we all had like ham radio implications. We went to mountains, we did soda. We went to an ice cave and we saw how far a radius could go in this cave, you know. And we went to a castle and we activated the castle on the air. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a, ham radio implications in every little part, which is a super cool like thing that kind of s cemented in your brain that ham radio can be used in a lot of places. And, yeah, like know. the caves recently um, yeah. for the, the rescue, right? Exactly. So would you consider, I, I don't know, maybe you have a title um, for our area or for Yoda. Is there, are you like an ambassador for our ITU area? Not officially. And um, it's kind of like what's in gears right now. I'm kind of like an, an, an instigator or a prolesticizer. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a messenger. Um, back in 2016, the Yasmi Foundation, and don't ask me what it stands for, it's it's a foundation, I think Ward Silver, in 0 ax is the current president. It's just for um, promoting the state of the art of ham radio through like mm -hmm. foundation grants and like things like this where you send some Americans over to the um, Yoda camp um, to learn about what they do and how they engage youth and bring that over here so we can do it over here in, the, in this region and, and in the states and in the Americas. Um, so... Over there, they do have like a youth section of the IRU. They have like a youth committee, and they have committee members. There's like 20 or 30 people on that with a with an ambassador, um, if you will. And so far, I've been kind of the the center point of that activity. There's of course so many youth things going on. Like you hear about the Youth DX Association, um, the the expedition. You hear about um, WRTC had a youth team or three youth teams that just finished up. And um, things like uh, the Youth Forum at Dayton that Carol Perry runs. There's little clubs like Yachts, yeah. um, Bears, Bark Junior, the uh, Boulder Amateur Radio Club Junior, which is really famous for training a lot of young people, getting a lot of young people into ham radio. Um, but Yoda is, is a unique thing that hasn't happened here, like collecting all of the young people and trying to find them all and, and getting them in one place so that they can yeah. have a social network of people who are their own, their same, you know, around the same age as their, their own. And uh, also do like this whole you know, week long thing of ham radio. And throughout the year, there's events like contests and um, activities that, that keep them engaged and, you know, entertained and stuff. Very good. And, they, so, and it's all done by them, not by some, you know, not by like the AWRL or. Right, right, whatever. right. It's, it's people like us who, you know, started that. Sure. So, really quick, I want to say thank you to Toys R for Boys. Thank you so much for the super chat there. By the way, guys, as you're watching this and as we get further along, if there's a question you have, um, start queuing them up in the chat, and, and as we get a little bit further, I'll remind everybody to kind of hit me with the questions because we're probably going to go for about an hour, Sterling, if that's all right with you. I yeah. think that's good, about mm -hmm. an hour. Um, so I heard you on the ICQ podcast. I've been a, a subscriber <laughs> of theirs for a while. And then I actually saw the video when we started talking about doing this thing, this interview. So um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you mentioned, a lot of things you just mentioned right now. <laughs> so let's unpack a little bit about it. Um, Yoda, like you mentioned, not very popular in the United States yet, mm -hmm. right? But it's right. huge pretty much across the globe. Yeah. Well, specifically in Europe right now and the Africa. So this year okay. is the year of South Africa. Um, and okay. uh, in a couple of weeks on the 7th through the 15th of August is the Yoda Camp 2018, which takes place in South Africa. Last year it was in Great Britain. The year before that it was in uh, uh, Austria. Mm -hmm. 
and and they're doing a few more things like they're launching a balloon and that sort of stuff. But like it's all over IR Region One, which is the Europeans and Americas. IR Region Re Region Three is the Asia's, um, the uh, Australia. They have a similar thing going on, but because there seems to be like to me, I, I I mean even on the radio, I never talk to um, um, uh, Chinese or Japanese because the propagation just doesn't make it. But it also seems like I never really get a good feel of like what's happening in the amateur radio sphere, if you will, over there. Mm -hmm. But I did hear at Freakshafen that they are doing the same thing. Like they have some young people involved in getting this, the getting this ball rolling, and they don't have anything set up in stone yet. And that's kind of where we are right now. I have a few people. I've been kind of talking about this all over the place, um, doing interviews like this, saying, like, Yoda is a great thing. Let's do it over here. Um, change it up. Do whatever we need to do to, you know, have something similar. Um, and, Clarification um, point. It's not Yoda like Star oh, right. Wars. Somebody in chat, I think, had it spelled Yoda. It's youngsters on the air. Like right. soda, but with a Y, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. And so aside from a camp, Right, because a camp's just kind of like a one-off event. Is mm -hmm. it something that has yearly events? Is there uh, online forums like like Discord, for example, or Facebook? Yeah, what else do absolutely. they do? Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. On Yoda, they they use like a Telegram chat, and they have a big group chat of like 150, 200 people, and they they keep in touch all year long. Telegram um, chat. What is that exactly? Telegram is yet another chat app like WhatsApp. That's oh, okay. You know, it's just. Just another one. I'm not on that one. Um, <laughs> add it to your list. All right. Um, All right. And then, so the actual activities that they do, they do a, um, the, and every December they do Youth Month, and it's uh, it's kind of like a QSO party, but with young people. Like young people are the the uh, the the thing to contact, the the one that makes the, they make the point. And they also get young people on the air at, at bigger stations. Um, a lot of hams over there with like larger stations invite young people, and they get like points and stuff and. Points get thrown around and it's a lot of fun. Um, similar to like think of like school club roundup, week long activity where a bunch of schools get on the air. Um, in this case, it happens for an entire month. Mm -hmm. um, another program is called the Youth Contesting Program, and if you're at the contest dinner at Dayton this year, Florian and Koos, um, Koos being the current uh, South Africa leader, Koosvik uh, ZR ZS1 ZR1 KF uh, or ZS6 K I I forget. He's yeah, he son. he competed Sorry. in WRTC, right? Not, I don't think so. Not oh, this year. Maybe God, maybe previously. So. Okay, okay. This year, um, HA8RT and DK6SP were two Yoda people who competed um, this year. Um, but Koos so, was mm -hmm. one that, he's been in Yoda for a long time, South African, and, and so he's like bringing it to his country. And so I've been like talking with him a lot on how he did it to like, kind of spearhead that activity. And he, it's not just him. He has a, you know, big social media, you know, social media, social group of friends doing it, right. uh, helping him out. Um, but the Youth Contesting Program is a program in which it's like a de-expedition. It's kind of like WRTC where they send a bunch of people to a place to operate. Or, for example, it's like um, right. the, the Youth DX uh, Adventure. Except instead of like taking them to DX, you take them to like K3LR's place or K9CT's place or W1, K1TTT, like a big mega super station, and you get like a team of young people on the air for a contest, um, who are already like into contesting, but all they do is like 100 watts and wire that kind of thing. It, it oh, like, okay. It's yeah. like a mind blowing experience to the to the operators. Right. Um, right. And uh, you know, totally free, uh, as far as I know. I think traveling in in Europe is a lot cheaper, so they can pay for that sort of sure. thing. Sure. It's like the flying around and all that stuff. So that it, is, yep. um, that was pitched at the contest dinner, which is all these super big mega contesters, like like I mentioned, K9CT, K3LR, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So there's some momentum in that. So hopefully we see like more young people at these big mega stations. So it sounds like the UK and a little bit South Africa has kind of got more of their act together a little bit regarding mm -hmm. the youth. Um, in this country, really the only yeah. thing that screams youth to me is like jamboree on the air. Yeah, and again, that's just a and scouting, a, a one time and scouting. Um, mm -hmm. So where are we aside from that? Kind of the state so, of youth. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. So um, like with yacht and a couple of clubs, we have a nice list here. Youth at it, WRTC yeah. World Radio Sport Team Championship mm -hmm. um, is just finished. It's like the World Cup of of ham radio. Mm -hmm. It just so happens to coincide every with four the years. World yeah. Cup. Yeah. Um, there were three youth teams, all in the age of I'm gonna guess around 25 uh, or less. Um, 
one of which scored in like the top 20, and the one American, KG5HVO Bryant, participated as Yankee 83 Zulu with uh, CE2LR, Matthias, 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 from somewhere in South America, um, but I forget which, and they scored 3,340,344 points with three... 1,696 QSOs over 24 hours. Yeah, uh, mainly it's, CW from what I remember too, yeah, right? It's Most crazy. of them are CW. And uh, I don't know if you've met Bryant, but he's like a really proficient operator and he's really cool. Like I, I got the chance to talk to him at Hamvention and um, I don't know when the last time there was, uh, I'm sure there were there have been other American um, youth at WRTC because we had it in like starting in Seattle. There's one in Boston, but it goes all over the world, just like the World Cup. Um, so there's that. That was pretty cool. Um, like I mentioned, Yoda Camp that's happening here in a few weeks in South Africa. Um, they have a special event station, so if you hear South Africa, they'll be on the air for the week of 8 to 15 August. Um, 8 and... through 15th of August, you said? Yeah. Okay. Um, so point your beams to South America. It's pretty far out there for, for me <laughs> yeah. off from Missouri here, but yeah. I don't know. Some guys in Florida can probably hit them pretty well. Yeah, sure. Um, and then so I'll mention YARC, the Youth Young Young Amateur Radio Club. Youth Amateur Radio Club. Young, mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. I should know better because I'm like one of the <laughs> board like, members. I'm board member, um, yeah. So this is a club um, a guy named David started. He initially posted on Reddit saying like, hey, hams of young hams of Long Island, I'm getting a club together. So he started Discord. Um, and I was like, um, why don't you just make this open to all young hams? And then, boom, it exploded. There's like, I don't know, 300? I mean, I wonder if they're watching me in there. Like correcting me. Their Discord's <laughs> pretty hopping. I don't know. Is yeah, it... it's super active, uh, except for right now. Nobody knows I'm online. <laughs> oh, you didn't but, um, post there. Oh no. Well, is, maybe somebody will thing. figure it out. There um, you go. So a... here, here's an interesting question. So mm -hmm. you know, you, you mentioned Yark. Uh, you, you and I are both on Discord. A lot of people are kind of going to Discord to chat, which is largely kind of co-opted from the gaming community. Right. How would you? And it's it's kind of tough. And I don't even know the answer. I have some thoughts. But I'm curious what you think as well. What is the quote-unquote difference between a young amateur of today versus some of the old timers, right? It feels like there's something different that was a bit different than before, even a yeah. decade, two decades before. Right. There, there, let, me, let me explain the sense of traditional ham radio. Like, sure. You get, a, you get an HF radio, you get an antenna. You put it on the air and then you talk. And you, you talk either in nets or rag chew or contesting um, or just listening and, and giving out QSL cards, that sort of thing. That's traditional ham radio. And, and there are a lot of young people who, that's how most people still, like young people sure, still, sure. are looking forward to do. But like, Oh, and this radio, is not disparaging. In no way am I disparaging anybody or, oh, at all with this. We're just sure. pointing out the differences, how it feels to me things are kind of different than they were 10, 20 years ago, if you know right. what I mean. Yeah. So like back then you were you had your HT you got on the repeater you got on the net you talked to your repeater people and that that was it but now cometh the internet and the internet has been here for a long time but like the the people who are being born now are born into like internet where it is basically a part of their life it's part of my life but I didn't come into it till like age you know, twelve when I had like my first computer with in the dial up. But like now, it's like super fast internet, all these games, all this stuff. So like they're being raised with games and Discord and immediate chat and like, you know, in incredible amounts of like saturation in terms of like the social life through the net, through the internet. So that's how, that's one way it's changing. There are more and more young people on things like Discord, things like uh, Instagram and you know social media, etc. So that's where ham radio is going. I want to like I think I see more people. Uh, more younger people, like like even uh, including you, like doing more live streaming, doing more Instagramming, doing more like sharing the world about their ham radio experiences. Um, and at the same time, technological advances, SDR, um, low cost computers, all that stuff. Web SDR being like, hey, what's ham radio? And I go, here's like a big long list, and then we, Web SDR is one of them, and oh, that's something yeah, where that's... you can just walk in and listen to the entirety of HF spectrum. Yep. You don't have to buy anything, but there it is. And a lot of hams, a lot of younger hams are getting into that, using that as inspiration uh, to pursue further. Um, there are 
there's a renaissance. There's always been like the um, the youth forum. There's always been like Carol Perry's. She's been doing it for almost 30 years now. Yeah. At Dayton Hanvention, it's the biggest forum of 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 all of Hanvention of all. Um, but you see more of those speakers. What it is is like you have about 10 speakers under the age of. Uh, 18 give a talk about ham radio and you see more 3d printing and making and you know the these, yes. these tower climbing robots and these yeah. weird but awesome not weird in the bad sense but weird in like the unique like um novel sense mm -hmm. the uh integrations of technology that help ham radio do better things and also the um just the outright improvement of radio like Bryant in fact maybe it was a different person Bryant give gave some speech somebody gives gives a talk gave a talk about fractal antennas and you know how they're used in cell phones yep. and how yep. we can use them to have bigger you know uh, higher bandwidths and how to model that and um these kinds of things are super accessible now uh, and it's kind of the the mainstream so like there's that so yeah. that answer your question it, it answers a lot of questions. Uh, <laughs> so you kind of you kind of hit most of my thoughts there. Mm -hmm. Like you said, everybody started out in the past with uh, you know, a, if not a boat anchor, a lot more analog component, yep. base transceiver, um, maybe a couple of bands they'd operate on, a lot of DXing, trying to get distant calls, maybe repeater stuff, but even then was kind of you know. Not mm -hmm. always everybody on that. Um, you're still dealing with code, no code, that kind of stuff. That was mainly mm -hmm. in the 90s, though. Um, some CBers were coming into ham radio, that kind of stuff. I think one of the big things, and you kind of already, you kind of already got to it by c giving all these examples. W the what in ham radio has just gotten broader and broader and broader. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned uh, balloon launch. There's satellite operation, which is a huge niche. There's so many more digital modes than there ever was. Um, yep. radios, are get, radios are getting cheaper than they've ever been. So it's kind of like a target-rich environment, if you will, is kind of how I look at it. There's just so many things that kids, or, you know, young people can get into in ham radio, it seems like. Yep, exactly. And the barrier to entry is so much lower. Um, my first radio was a TH7, like an ICOM TH7. It cost like $140. I had to earn it. And then my first HF radio was like $800, and I really had to earn it. Like I wrote this big um, PowerPoint presentation on why I need that radio because it has two meters, so I can hit this repeater like 60 miles away with this antenna I'm pro you know, proposing. And she's finally like, okay, fine. <laughs> but today, you don't need any of that. You can get online remotely with remote ham radio or remote hams. Um, in fact, remote ham radio, and I'm not like a advertising, but they do a scholarship program where if you're under the age of 25, you can do it for free for a year. Um, meaning like you can plug into these super big contest remote stations and uh, operate like like you had a massive station. But also there's remote hams, which is free. And if you can get permission from the operator of each of those individual remotes, um, you can you can operate um, as long as you have a license and all that stuff. And the license, um, there's been so many more like ham studies come out, and that is the primo way of learning how to get your license, learning the the tricks of the trade and the you know how to pass the test. You have the crash course, the um, Dave Kasslers, the Posh Nassies, the I don't know who else um, on YouTube who do it in a face-to-face -face way. So it's so much easier to get a ham radio, so much cheaper. And um, frankly, a lot funner. And there's always like the people who are like, it's just not relevant anymore. It's just not cool anymore. And that may be true, but like, what I'll talk about it in a little bit is how we can change that view and how I might be able to prove it's actually the opposite. Yeah. So I before we get into that, we've gotten a couple questions. I want to get. I'll ask two questions and then we'll dive in because this is a good little position transfer point. <laughs> so. Um, where was it? Carl says, so compared back to today, would you say that it's easier to get into amateur radio as technology develops? Yeah. I think, I think by just, and large, yes. Just like I said. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, like, I wish it would be easier because, like, what, why, why can't we have VE testing done online remotely? Like, you can still have, like, a camera set up and all oh, this yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. I they, agree. There will be, like, oh, well, you, what about cheating? It's like, you don't need to cheat for this for like the technician license like it is not a hard license to to, to master um, um, but like you said um, there's so many m many ways to get into that and it's cheaper and it's easier than ever before so and another thing is the so like the HF thing and I think this has been a thing for for forever as long as I've been in it 
Um, you still kind of like shoot for your first HF base station, but like as a young person, you should always know that if you step into a club or ask nicely, like saying like, oh, I'm a new ham, I got my license X, you know, weeks ago, uh, I would really like to get on HF, all of the people will flock to you and say, you can borrow this, you can have this, I've had this radio for 70 years and I've never used it. And it might be an old radio, but it's how, it's how we still get into it. Um, and field day is still traditionally one of the most inspiring events. And what we mentioned earlier, Jamboree on the Air and scouting is probably the biggest influx of young people into the hobby itself, if, if not for just the understanding like behind it. Like there is a ham radio thing out there. It's not CB radio. It's this thing. It's a hobby thing. And I might do that later, like when I'm 30 or something, right? Yeah, because I mean, it's I always joke around that it's a it's a lifetime hobby. There's always mm -hmm. something new and interesting you can do with ham radio. Um, somebody asked about kind of getting started, and they mentioned you know twenty five dollar radio. I, I still think getting one of the dongles is a great way to go because you yeah. can you can you can listen. You can listen to both the single sideband. You can listen to the AM. You can do digital. You don't you know with a radio like this, it's great. It does shortwave and it does single sideband, but you need other devices if you want to do digital. And the yes. SDR's got it all built in, and you you already have a computer. Um, you know, if you're watching this, I'd assume you, you at least got a computer at home. Um, yeah, so second question, and it kind of leads on to where we're going, is if you were a young person, or if you were maybe, well, no, I think that's a follow-on question, but if you're a young person and you wanted to get started in ham radio, where would you go? What would you look at? So... I guess the only thing I have to go off is testimony of how did I and, and every every one of us in here who's a ham has has a similar story of find a club and find help um, and Google a lot because um, what I did you know I was I, it was like almost a year before I got my first radio it was another like three months after that before I actually keyed down and this is after like getting the license and stuff because um, of the mic fright and stuff but like Yep. Educate yourself if you're really like into it, um, because it's cool. Like if it's ham radio, like you're into ham radio because it's like a thing I want to do. It just like there there's a switch on your brain that cannot be like satisfied with the amount of information that that is being thrown at you. It only comes once you're in the seat at the club, um, or hopefully not in a you know boring business meeting, but like watching somebody show and tell their activity at a D expedition or um, how to make an antenna of this, like a J-pole antenna, um, or doing activities like high-altitude ballooning. I have a list here of, like, what should your club do to make it more fun? Like high-altitude ballooning, um, doing RC aircraft um, and integrating ham radio in that using, like, APRS. Um, Fox Sense always come up, too, in this, in this case. Something that's, like, a physical fun activity where you build something, you use something, you take home either, like, something, both something physical and something you learn. So... Um, a club is the very best first way to start um, really chooching at the, you know, ham radio spirit. <laughs> of course, at this time, you're already, like, into it, right? Like, you, you want to do ham radio. How do I get into it? Don't just go out and buy a radio and think you're going to be, like, a ham. Like, there's a lot more to it. There's other hams that, you know, want to help. And it, it's, it's also whatever you want to make it to be. So if you want to do that, that's fine, too. Um, no, no harm, no foul, you know? Okay, so um, the fostering the interest in radio is kind of the, the next question I had, but it sounds like you covered a lot of that. But is there something else you could say in that area? Because we covered so much already. Um, so attracting and retention, retending, um, attracting and, and holding, retaining <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> young people is kind of like the question there. Um, I, I have a long list, another long list of things like... I, uh, I like the preparedness. <laughs> um like I mentioned earlier, your club, the club is like the heart of the of the the hobby. Um, the local club, not like the ARRL club, they're they're focused on bigger things at hand, like Spectrum Defense and right. making magazines and books and stuff. Um, but like the St. Louis Suburban Radio Club, wink wink, um, <laughs> they have a a lot of activities. They're consistent. They're frequent. They have an engineering club where you get to go up and install repeaters and go to roofs and stuff, and you know play with actual hardware. They do uh, fox hunts, they do field days, they do um, outside activity, outdoor activity events, you know, that sort of thing. And they have a modern online presence. Their website doesn't look like it was made um, with, I don't know, what do you call it, like <laughs> Microsoft front page 
or like with hand keyed HTML, it's like a proper WordPress or Joomla or whatever mm-hmm. site. Yeah. Um, dynamic things update. You have an email list that is, you know, multifaceted. Like you have different committees. You have um, a main list saying like, come and come and do our, you know, hang out with our stuff. Here's our next meeting. It's a show and tell. Here's our this and that. Can and I can I, pa- out, can I can I pause yeah. for a second? Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I, you you mentioned a couple times that the club is kind of like call it the nexus, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you do if the clubs, let's say the club in your area is more of an old style? They they yeah. really just want to rag you, don't do a lot of the show and tell. I so I'll I'll answer that in a in a political way. I guess. Yeah. yeah. They, I I thought I grew up in a rural area. Like I'm I. I used to live in Warrenton, Missouri. It's like 60 miles outside of St. Louis. So actually going to St. Louis was out of the way. But the closest club was Washington, Missouri, which was about 30 minutes away. And I thought it would be like an old boys club, but actually it was like a really surprisingly... I mean, it was they, they were generally like way older than me. But mm-hmm. when I walked in, I felt really welcome. Like they said, hi, who are you? Like, are you ham? Are you, are you licensed? Do you, need, do you need any help doing things? Like they were instantly at the door trying to help you out, help me out. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how I, you know, landed my first radio and antenna and how to set it up and I got nice. all help. Um, but I do hear lots and lots of horror stories and there are clubs around here that have a reputation for being like the old boys elitist club. Like you don't want to like get into there, but fortunately for them, they don't actually even have a website and I didn't know they existed until I was like looking around at, um, Google earth and I saw this little ham radio shack next to one of the RC flying fields with oh. the tri-band and I'm like, what is that? And I, do Google Foo and I find out it's a, it's a radio club here in St. Louis, but trying to see, like, what do they actually do? There's no website. And to find mm-hmm. out later, like, they can only hold so many members, and that number right. goes down as the SKs go up. It's yeah. like, the, the oh, attrition is okay. the battle of attrition. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also hear about, you know, young hams coming in and just getting booted out. And I'd like, wow. I'm like, that can't be happening. There has to be something else to the story, or like, it, it is really a bad club. But I don't think those experiences happen very often. If they do, like, let us know, because we'll come knocking on the door and be like, knocking on your door to help you out, knocking on their door to be like, hey, y'all, you should get your act together. Um, yeah. Because hams are friendly. Like, hams who go to public places to set up things and, and you know, meet are very friendly, like, as, as far as I've seen. Mm-hmm. I'm curious about any other um, experiences that we've had. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the chat. Are you looking yeah, at I'm the chat? At yeah, we got it. So I've noticed, too, I get a ton of comments on the, the channel and the videos that um, either there's a club in the area and they're just not really that active or, like, they're only rag chewers or, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're big station, big antenna guys. Um, kind of a, an area, a barrier to entry for a lot of new hams because they just don't have the money to throw down on it, you know, yeah. a multi-$10,000 um, antenna. Nice. Um so, you know, I, I appreciate that the, the club, in your example, is kind of the nexus. It seems like, to me, if you needed a nexus, it, it must always kind of be more information than you currently have, mm-hmm. right? Otherwise, yeah. you would kind of lose interest. Right. So, I, I wasn't, I'm not super active in a club. I maybe go to our club meetings once every two months, if that. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't go to all the events. And I feel that, like, gr- kind of in the world we live in now, like you've already mentioned, with the Internet and with the, the forums that tell you so many things and, and YouTube that tells you so many things, you can kind of, like, augment the clubs with mm-hmm. some of the information online. I still exactly. think it's a vital part. I always recommend people find a club in the area because I think a club is kind of like a shortcut. Yeah. It's like a shortcut to, to being a really stable operator um, right. and you get some help because I guess the concern is, as you already said, retention. I feel that sometimes without the club, it's likely for someone to kind of fall off and not stick with it. Yeah. And if all else fails, uh, especially for those who are, are very like unwilling to go out and like, um, they may have like social anxiety... Um, Reddit, Amateur Radio, and the Art Club are always, you know, welcome, you know, welcoming to to people who need more help getting into that kind of field, you know. That and I've seen like ha- people hamming it for like you join on on um, say Reddit, and you're like, oh, I tried to join in my club and it was just blah blah blah, it was terrible. 
people will just send you a radio or send you like help, like whatever you need, uh, or help you find another club because there just might happen to be like another club you didn't hear about or or that had a you know poor website but like a good reputation. Um, they can definitely help you with that. Um, and and I've seen a few good stories come out of that. So you know, join Yark if all this fails. <laughs> Right on. It's all on. It's all online. It's all Discord and you know email and stuff. But it is. It does lack that like shortcut way of like you do. There's a certain thing uh, when you're face to face with somebody. Like you can transfer way more knowledge and way more like um, like sublingual knowledge, like you know body language that sort of thing. Right. As well as like actual product. Like here's an antenna. Here's yes. my instructions to do these things. You know, and, and a demonstration helps immensely too. That is absolutely uh, important is being yeah. able to go hands on. Um, mm-hmm. I think that as, as as much as people try, you know, on YouTube and whatnot to do good reviews on mm-hmm. things, unless you really put your hands on it, it's sometimes yeah. tough to get the full 100 percent, particularly if the person doing the demonstration is not working for the company, but an, a fan like mm-hmm. they earned the respect of that product and the product's good and they're demonstrating it for you. You usually get like a way truer review like a, a real-time in-person review i find with a lot of ham radio gear yep also access to ham swaps usually clubs mm-hmm. are the ones that put on the ham swaps and that's another really good play, way to get gear yep. <laughs> not not to <laughs> not to turn this into gear but it comes down to gear a lot yeah, <laughs> to be honest for sure it is a gear hobby like you can't do radio without a radio mm-hmm. um unless it's online i guess so we're we're kind of at an interesting point with with amateur radio. A lot of people say amateur radio is dying. In a lot of ways, I feel that it's keeping pace, if not growing a bit. Mm-hmm. But we are going to have attrition points soon, yeah. right? And and it's just going to keep going up as the baby boomers age right. and, and whatnot. And so it's like it's kind of like a bubble. Like you know, right. we're seeing like where there's some there's some guys doing surveys and and it. I don't know if it's always been this way or if it's just now being this way where the the median age is like around age 60 and so in 20 years will that bubble shift or does it like continue to grow and like peak at that age or does it go down through the efforts of like Yoda and Yark and Yacht and all the things that start with Y for youth you know Oh um, what did you say the median age was again like 60 50 oh, okay. like when you when That's you look what I at the too. I think yeah. you said 20. I was like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like wish. The youngest age on these but... surveys is maybe like 27. But yeah. You know, they didn't send it to me because I'm 26. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. But like, so I, I do want to talk about like some of the m- campaigns that like the league and, and other like uh, basically the group think of ham radio has thought like this is what's happening now and, and, and what's hot. In the past five years, Great. six years, has been like the maker movement, right? We need to like get hams into the maker movement, infiltrate that, and, and cross-pollinate. But I think we've been doing that for a long time, and the maker movement has either peaked or it's starting to recede. Like yeah. now people are more going into, um, or, you know, I think, I think technologically-wise, ham radio is becoming less relevant to the maker movement because maker movement's involved in like, I went to a maker fair, and it was like, there is a lot of 3D printing, but there's also like puzzle making and bag making and cosplay and steampunk and um, lock uh, computer. picks. Yeah, there's, <laughs> it's it's so broad, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. only a few of those people over only a few of those people's interests overlap with like ham radio. It's a niche and, within a niche kind of. Yeah, and almost. honestly, the only people coming to ham radio are those like steampunkers looking for vacuum tubes that they can put in their like arm band. You know, it's like just to make a costume it's not like they're in it for him radio they do come and say oh well that's cool you have this um you know radio thing is that a cb radio radio you have there is that the cb so on that note what's what can we do to fix that well Mm -hmm. i think or fix that i guess augment ham radio and like follow the current trends is the hacker movement i'm Mm. pointing it today it's the hacker movement and it's already it's kind of already it's already been there. It's already happening. Okay. Um, you know, go to Hackaday, and there's quite a lot of ham radio articles on Hackaday.com. Oh, ha- um, but think specifically about it. Hackaday. Yeah, you're right. There are. Yeah. There are a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but think about it. Software defined radio. Yeah. Um, all of these things, like the cloud augmenting um, propagation studies, like through HamSci, the Ham Radio Science Citizen Science Initiative. Yep. Um, couldn't have been done without like a big cloud-based, you know, n- uh, data logging thing. Um, and other propagation websites like uh, uh, the, the VHF prop everyone goes to to see if the two meters is open through APRS. 
um, <clears throat> um, other software defined things, you know, that's pretty much like kind of what ham radio is. And FT8 is like the next generation, you know, um, digital mode that's so robust and WSGT and all that stuff. Um, that's where ham radio is right now, and that's like everyone flocks to those things like crazy. And so the pattern here is it's all software, it's all programming, it's all like something in a computer that's helping ham radio. And I think that's where we need to like start infiltrating like the colleges, the comp site apartments, yeah. the, um, you know, uh, the hacker spaces. Like we have Arch Reactor here in St. Louis and, and the thousands all over the all over the, the world. And, and there's more and more ham radio stations being put up at hacker spaces. Yeah. Um, and then they get the exposure of ham radio as a thing that they can use to improve their skills. Like... Um, using Python to code a, a little AFSK uh, APRS receiver by yeah. themselves, you know, and, and make it smaller so they can fit it on a smaller balloon, that sort of stuff. Um, I like remote. the hacking concept because also that that yeah, that pulls in things like Raspberry Pis, yeah, which is huge. Everybody wants to figure out right. how to attach a Raspberry Pi to just mundane household right. items at this point. And and there's some overlap with hacking and making like you're making with sure. Computers and and I think some will argue that, but like, and don't don't excuse don't uh, think hacking is a bad thing. Like I'm hacking into your bank no, account. No, not at all. Money. No, hacking yeah. is is just literally like boop, 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 having fun, computing and uh, programming something to solve. Learning a how I've always I've always kind of described it as as learning intimately how things work, mm -hmm. and how you may manipulate them in a way that was not intended, um, yep. not necessarily bad, but manipulate them in in a better understanding of kind of how. The world, because there's so many things we take for granted, right? Yeah. I mean, ham radio is is a is kind of the rebuking of taking things for granted. Cell phones, we take cell phones for granted. All yeah. these devices, right? Uh, hackers don't take things for granted. They they kind of um, learn from what is and how to make it their own. I guess yeah. you will. So yeah. to make make ham radio. And I'm, I have to say this to make ham radio great again. I just <laughs> have a hat. I oh, that's think, right. You do have a hat. That's cool. <laughs> it says yeah. make amateur radio great. Um, is is to get more programmers, younger programmers, who are really well trained in the art of creating software Love and yeah. solutions through software. Yeah. To do things like, what can we do to bridge DSTAR, DMR, and Yasus System Fusion? Like, it's all going to be through a computer. It's all going to be through Raspberry Pi, but somebody has to code that. And there's already people who have, like, you know, experimented this. Yep. Um, what can we do to make APRS uh, more robust or mm -hmm. longer range? Look at Gotenna, um, which is a company that does, like, the Gotenna mesh. You can buy, like, a, it's like a two-way radio, but with texting. But that's that's just APRS, right? But it's like I've to do right APRS, here. you gotta have a radio, you gotta have a thing that plugs into it, you gotta have a TNC, you gotta do this and that. Why don't somebody make a radio that has APRS built in that doesn't cost six hundred dollars, or a integrated chip that smacks onto the side of it and it's tiny, like a mobile yep. link, but even smaller, and it doesn't need a phone to communicate. Hey, you got one too. You're like one of uh, like the two people I know in the world that I. <laughs> yeah, I they they sent me one. I'm trying to make a. It's not showing up because of the green screen, but um, <laughs> I'm trying to make a uh, like a an not an amplifier, but I'm trying to put a better antenna on it and get it up on my antenna mast to see if I yeah. can improve its reception. I get about close to a mile range um, between two of them talking to each other. Yeah, and there's a guy on YouTube who's been like paragliding, and he gets like some 12 miles because he's. Oh on sure, paper. yeah, with elevation, um, yeah. And I've been at like a few conferences. Like I went to Denver for the Great American Beer Festival, and I just started shouting out like, "Hey, I'm in Zero to see," and there was like two or three people there with one. And, um, oh wow! Went to a few festivals here in St. Louis, like uh, Mardi Gras, and there mm -hmm. was like one or two people. Uh, that's a high, but it's exactly ham radio, and it's like they're reinventing ham radio mm -hmm. to a new market that doesn't even know we exist. And so I'm on their forums, like saying, "Oh, hey, by the way, APRS," and they're like, "What?" Yeah. You know, so yeah. and these are not youth in the perspective of like below the age of 20. These are like 20s, 30s people, either in college or fresh out of college, who are yep. you know, fresh in their job, and you know they need something to do, like a hobby. Uh, and a lot of them are programmers and coders and software engineers and that sort of thing well you kind um, of already hit it carl asked in the chat how do you think ham radio will help more use in occupations and jobs towards the future oh uh, it's like you're you're reading my my blog because um, <laughs> this is this is like ham radio was the reason why i got the job that i have today and, and why is I it the reason why path. yeah like the reason why i got into boeing is through communication systems integration 
and that's radios, you know. Uh-huh. So I had ham radio on my resume, mm-hmm. um, and somebody out there in communication systems team for F-15s were ty- typed in amateur radio or ham radio, and I came up first one. Like, you know, nobody else puts ham radio on their resume, um, and I, you know, it was an easy in, like super easy and I barely even interviewed it was like I've done wow. all these other things through radios like for example um, I did an internship at the VLA same exact story okay. my boss went to our um, internship like person you, you, I can put up a profile saying I'm looking for a job and they can search keywords they typed in ham radio and boom I got a job at the very large array in New Mexico oh, designing antennas really? and routing cables and learning about Atmos- or, um, um, astronomy, radio astronomy, um, where contact was filmed, right? And it was it was a super crazy awesome experience through radio. And there's a big ham radio club there, and they're the only Radio Shack like like business that I know of that actually has a Radio Shack, like a ham radio shack behind the counter. And I bought power poles there and wired ah. like things, and they're still open. Um, so. So you don't have an HRO around you? No, like there's there's actually no like in St. Louis and and I guess down in New Mexico there's like Nothing except for like small little like radio shack here and there. So it was all online. What part like, of New Mexico were you in? Socorro, Albuquerque. Is is there an HRO in Albuquerque, or is there any? There is yeah. a ham radio club, or a ham radio store. Yeah, online. I think so. But like, I mean, I'm talking about like radio shack, like a radio shack that would normally sell cell phones and cell phone cases. Oh, and, like a radio shack. Yeah, the store. Like, the store that got closed because they weren't making any money. This one was like owned by two hams who had radio stuff, and they sold. A lot of gear to New Mexico Tech, the university in Socorro, and to um, um, the, um, the actual radio observatory headquarters where they'd fix radios. So they always had to have like weird capacitors and um, you know transistors and inductors on hand so that they that makes can sense. you know prototype and debug and that sort of stuff. All these receivers, you know. Hmm. Um, I did some work out of uh, Las Cruces. Have you ever been to Las Cruces? Yeah, I passed through, but like that's awesome. Mm. <laughs> I've been to Santa Fe, and um, I knew the guys at Sandia National Labs. There's a ham radio club there. Okay. They're in charge of the a couple of D-Star repeaters, and that was my, like, if you look at my old blog, it's in zero. It's a zero in five land, and it's, like, I have pictures from Sandia Crest doing, like, you know, not climbing towers, but watching people climb towers, installing antennas, and doing D-Star stuff. Um uh, got to participate in field day with them, and, and, and uh, got to do, like, a special event at the White Sands um, and do like New Mexico Cuso party oh, driving around like did is the uh, is is it Arizona or New Mexico where the big discone is? Arizona, I think. Or no, Nevada. Yeah, it is. Is it Nevada? Nevada? Okay, Nevada. I got my the big wires yeah, crossed. and you can go up there and like plug your radio. Just plug into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and Phil mentions we have Gateway Electronics, and that's a that's a ham. There's a few hams there, um, and it's it's like a mom and pop. Uh, uh, ham, um, well, electronic junk store, if you will, or a, a superstore, supermarket. Um, <laughs> don't tell Matt, Matt the Castigar, I said junk store. Junk um, store. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's all because I went to school at Rolla, and they had a ham radio club. Yeah. And that was one of the deciding factors of going to school at Missouri S&T. Um, used to be called the University of Missouri at Rolla. Mm-hmm. Um, W zero Tripoli was there. Uh, they had a really good I Tripoli Institute of Electrical Electronics Engineers. They had a solar car team, like design teams, like they built and designed, designed and built a solar car that com- competed, and they've been doing that for years. Uh, and then we, I was in the the founding group of people who started the Mars rover design team, and I did oh, well. that. I got into that because um, I wanted to do their radios. I wanted to do telemetry. I wanted to do networking. I wanted to do, like, get their cameras to be sent out over 802.11 Wi-Fi because I knew that stuff. And they called on us specifically, the ham radio club, saying, like, we need help. And I'm like, raising my hand. Oh, that's um, cool. That's very cool. And we went cool. to competition. And it's like, imagine it's like, it's not like an actual Mars rover where you're slowly crawling around on the surface of Mars collecting dirt samples and, you know, every single command is like 13 minutes delayed and you don't yeah. know for 26. This is like, imagine astronauts are on Mars and you you need uh, like basically um, goats to carry around uh, um, yeah. tools and stuff. You need, um, you want to do some like remote science out far from base. These things can go like 20 miles per hour and they can go straight up a wall and they're 50 kilograms if they wanted like 200 amps like maximum draw on their motors. Like we wow. built a massive robot um, and uh, it could talk like 10 kilometers away because, you know, I knew stuff about Wi-Fi and beam antennas and that sort of stuff. Um, and with all those experiences, like, in, that was, like, basically 
electrical engineering and integration, not just like I'm trying to design a circuit um, to do, I don't know, 802 or uh, trying to do APRS telemetry or trying to build a radio itself. I'm right. just like putting together components, and that's like 99% of like integration companies and engineering companies is like here's a pro here's a solution here's a solution right and i'm going to put those together to solve a different problem than the two individual yep. you know things and that's heavy that's use of it. heavy use of cots products these days yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm in i'm in satcom so yep um very very not the same you guys are a little bit more black boxy i think but yeah um, exactly as because yeah, we're building one offs and you're building, building tons yep yep yeah. yep um, so, well, okay, so we hit the career thing, I think. Yep. Going back, is there anything more you wanted to say about kind of retaining interest slash retaining growth? You had so, a big page there. I don't want to cut you off halfway there. And by no the way, uh, congrats to Susan. Who else do we have? Got a couple people that passed uh, their technician license. Philip, Susan, a couple other people. Awesome. Congratulations. Sorry yeah. about that. Thanks, Franklin, for being a VDC for Misery s &T. That's awesome, too. See, the world is so small in ham radio. Um, yeah, it is. So, retention. So, like, the things I mentioned are kind of going to kind of naturally retain young people. Like, if you modernize ham radio and start doing, like, hackathons and um, make it easy and accessible um, and, and collect, the most important thing, I think, is having um, a, a club of like-minded individuals and like-aged individuals who, like, you know, you share a lot more common interests with than the older generation through like things like Discord or you know even starting like Slack chats or Mattermost or whatever you okay. use, you know yeah. like kind of work chat type things, um, and uh, and I think every club should have like youth committee like what can like just a committee to think about what things can we do and actually execute these things mm. um, um, to to retain youth and specifically to market and try to get into more schools and more. Um, Curriculum and that sort of thing. Like, for example, we have a guy who came to our club from Hillsborough, Missouri, kind of a long drive. Okay. Saying, like, he wants to do ham radio to teach wave um, theory, not like hardcore wave theory, but like Doppler shift and sure. um, frequency oh. and wavelength. And, and he even wants to go so far as like antennas. And so, yeah, satellites. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, throwing up uh, high altitude balloons so he can, you know, talk about buoyancy and. Um, um, you know, plastic. I don't know. You, the, the, it's a huge field. So he's come down, and, and we're helping him like do that through ISS, through maybe an ISS contact, um, yeah. and a high altitude balloon mm -hmm. to teach kids about STEM. Um, a ham radio is, is a brilliant way to teach STEM because there's so many aspects of it, super broad, from the very like surface level of, you know. You can use it to augment some other task, or in, and all the way down to the tiniest level of like Maxwell's wave equations, you can use ham radio to, I don't know, teach yourself, right? Yes. Um, um, do you do all, any talks? Boys down there. Sorry to go on a tangent here. Do you do any talks? Uh, I've done a few, not not terribly. So I do, I've done done a few like conventions. Mm -hmm. um, one I did for a university and I've done tons for like our IEEE section at- uh, Kind of on this at, topic, at yeah? Yeah, on like youth engagement. Excellent. And that sort of stuff. Very good. Um, and I'm always open to more if you need like a club if any club out there wants me to like talk for them um, Caveat is I'm getting married. I'm trying to buy a house. So like time is is like very thin. So <laughs> I do kind of like I, I roll off the cuff So I don't really need much like prep time and, and, and stuff, but yeah, I'm totally open to that if anybody needs needs very good very um, good So would you see any questions in the chat did I did you hit most of your your points on the uh, on the retention? Yeah. I'm on the last page, and like I said, like retention just comes with um, doing it, um, doing it right, right? Yeah. Elmering still, I, I I didn't even think we we mentioned Elmering, but we like didn't. One -on -one, yeah, that was my last point. Yeah, um, yeah. CW Ops. Somebody mentioned that in the chat earlier. CW Ops, CW mm -hmm. Academy is uh, the best thing I've ever seen in terms of like teaching somebody Morse code. But it's also the atmosphere. It's like the not atmosphere, but like the the environment of learning one on one or one on many with with a person who's an expert mm -hmm. online. That kind of needs to grow. That needs to grow for sure. Um, into into more things like, um, for example, I mean you've you're already kind of doing it with Ham Radio Crash Course. You got a chat. And you're answering questions. You're yeah. Talking about well, licensing. trying to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, so when um, we started Yark, we would just get on voice chat. Um, with like, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 of us. And mm -hmm. we just kind of like somebody would off the cuff just start reading the technician question pool 
or the general question pool, like, because they wanted to, like, level up. And people were like, oh, wow, I don't know the answer to that. And I was in, I was in one of the chats, and I'm like, dang, I should know that. And so we were all in there for, like, an hour just talking, like, one by one by one, doing, like, a ham study, like, practice session. Awesome. And, like, everybody, like, not everybody there, but a lot of people got their general, like, pretty shortly after. Sure. Um, because they I've were always, like, wow, this is easy. I've always found that it's it's not you have to have one sage-like person with all the answers. It's that mm -hmm. we all must be intrigued to find the solution to an answer mm -hmm. and talk through the problem. And some people are going to have more information. That's definitely true, and that's fine. Um, but it's this kind of give and take of learning that comes along with actually doing. That's why I say move forward with ham radio. You learn a little bit, and you take a step. You move. You you learn a little bit more. You take another step, and you yeah. through these process of taking little steps. Ham radio is very much the journey, by the way. It's not the destination. Um, mm -hmm. You you kind of that's the fun of it is learning and doing and learning and doing and this kind of confluence of experimentations and failing that is so interesting to me. Yeah. There's one more thing on my, my list I didn't get to talk about. So we talked about Elmering and the other the last thing it's probably probably should have mentioned this earlier and I like finished off with a with a solid point. But this is really important too, <laughs> yeah, I think that will answer one of um scrolling up here, Carl's questions. Um, do you think that the amount of youths into hammer radio will increase over the years as everything is becoming more advanced and there's more opportunities for youth to, youth to use this skill? Um, let me kind of answer that with with a what if um, what if instead of like contests so imagine contesting hammer you contesting you you set up a radio and you turn out a thousand contacts over a 24 hour period and it's a it's a it's a game of you versus yourself like um, if you're into contesting it's really not about like challenging propagation and like beating other people it's like you have your own limits and own goals and you always try to push through those just like any kind of sport or activity like that. Now, um, same goes true for golf. Uh, same goes true for any one-on-one, -on -one, one um, independent sport, fishing. But golf and fishing and esports, and I'm like looking at the camera intently, like Call of Duty, Counter Strike, mm -hmm. um, Hearthstone, Fortnite, Pow Player Undergrounds. Those are all singular sports. Like you are playing one versus many. Um, and sometimes one versus yourself. Yeah. You see what I'm getting at? There is a, there's a, there's a connection between ham radio contesting, and the modern day of like, what if you started streaming like your contest, and what if you started doing commentary and and continually like you know going on it. And there's been some streamers come up, but they like just turn on a camera and they make those contacts and they get like three people and they leave. It's just boring. Like yeah. I mean, golf is boring, and 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 tennis is boring. But it's what's yeah. exciting is um, the commentary, for one, is right. like, you know what they're doing because the commentators are like explaining their strategy, explaining what they need to do to get to this point, yep. um, explaining like the stress behind it, and then you start to drive, develop a passion um, for it. Like golf, for example, fishing is a, you know, yeah. I don't know if it's really big anymore, but it's still televised. Like, there are fishing competitions. The Bassmaster. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, there's, there's market for ham radio in that. And this year's That's WRTC, a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, this year's WRTC um, and every actually contest has a live score. Um, mm -hmm. This year it was for WRTC. It was like specifically like real time, so you could see like every second the yep. score would update. Yep. Um, and that's like step number one. Step number two was would be to start doing like um, daily videos. WRTC did that. They like went to um, individual stations and kind of got a, a glimpse into what they're doing, what the con the conditions are like, how many contacts are being made. Beautiful. And then step three needs to be like live. Um, and everyone yeah. needs to get on that bandwagon and go to Twitch and stream your contest or stream your activity. It doesn't have to be a contest. It could be like a new DX comes on the air and you're trying to get them on six bands in one day. Like, yeah. Set a goal and then like share it. Um, yeah, I mean, case in, is... case in point, I did the stream on field day, right? Ten mm -hmm. hours of, of just nonstop streaming, right, and making contacts. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of people watching. And then I, I did another stream um, kind of explaining how FT8D expedition mode works while trying to work Baker because I'm on mm -hmm. the West Coast. It's a lot easier. Exactly. For me. So I didn't make any are... contacts. I, I, I worked <laughs> them on three bands, but I didn't work them on three bands that night. But I tried to explain it, right? You yeah. know what I mean? So I love that. You, yeah. are, you are probably the first of this revolution, um, if not the second or third. <laughs> 
uh, in doing that. And that's kind of like I've been watching you, and I've been seeing like this is actually what will eventually become like the next esport. Like it's going to be a it's going to be a little square on Twitch ham radio contesting radio sport, high speed CW that sort of stuff. Um, it doesn't high have to be high speed CW. There you yeah, go. Even, yeah, even yeah, like that's that's even like a like a ESPN the Ocho like right. Get on that. <laughs> the Ocho, yeah. Right after the World Series of Dice. Is that yes. what it's going to be? Exactly. And eventually that should, I feel like that will blossom. But the problem is, like, you can't just, like, get on and start streaming and just make contacts. There has to be some kind of, like, you're trying to explain to the layperson, like, what's going on. And you're also trying to engage other people who know what you're doing but aren't contesting at that particular moment because of whatever reason. Like, people like me who, like, I live in an apartment and I just want to see, like, what strategies out there that I can use to improve my contest, you know, contesting skills? Who's out there that I can like join their little social media roundup and, and talk about contesting in the in the chat, you know, um, and you know, go on with that. So, I think that should answer that question. Like, yes, youth are more youth are coming, and the the environment is changing. Millennials are killing ham radio, and I mean killing as in changing. Um, a lot of people like uh, killing really, it. Really, <laughs> yeah, they really hated my blog post uh, titled uh, titled that. But uh, the the real gist of it is, um, the new generation is making it modern. You know, and and I think in the future it's going to be huge. Like, I mean, if if not huge, it's going to be the the bubble will slowly deflate. But yeah. like young people will come in to fill up like the the rings. I don't know if like. We're gonna get thousands more licensees total. I don't know, like things like that, like in yeah, the yeah. future. But I know, like we're doing things to make youth more interested. I definitely so, feel it's not going away. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love absolutely. that. I love that sports analogy because you know I've done the streams where it's like we're just gonna do contests or not contests, just contacts, just QSOs. Not mm -hmm. that popular, right? Not that popular right. because it's kind of like like you said. This is just someone using a telephone to call someone, right? Mm -hmm. If you water it down, you're watching someone just communicate. Exactly. Which or if is... you water golf down, you're watching somebody walk in a field hitting a ball. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Or things like that. But like, but, there are ways to make it exciting. Yeah, there, there's a, there's a, a, a barrier to entry for not only education. You gotta know how to contest. You gotta know the techniques, which that drives people. You mm -hmm. gotta have a big fat powered station with an amazing antenna most of the time. That drives people. So yeah, it it scratches a lot of itches, if you will. Mm -hmm. I and love it's that. It's gonna get young people involved, and eventually, they'll want to try it too. Um, yeah. They'll see it on Twitch and be like, "Well, what's that?" Oh, that's to... that's a really good idea. Yeah, I don't know how to I don't know how to capitalize on that, but <laughs> maybe I'll go to like Irwindale uh, Racetrack and and try and set up a, a ham radio demolition derby or something like that. <laughs> Yes. I, I do want to make one point before we go. Um, you were talking about what you felt was kind of like the, the hacker movement, kind of getting mm -hmm. people involved. The one thing I'll, I'll leave it with, and, and I'll give you the final point to you. Um, I think that satellite radio, particularly FM birds with cheap radios, is a really, really good introduction for people into ham radio because it's cheap. Mm -hmm. And you can – there was a guy who just got worked all states with – Purely FM sats, I believe. Yeah. Which is awesome. Can you imagine, <laughs> yeah. like, working all states, of course, through a satellite, on a Baofeng, or yeah. most likely two, mm -hmm. or using an F, uh, probably, so if you want that, FT60 to receive and a Baofeng to transmit, and there you go. Wow. That's that's yeah. all you need to do, really. Easy as that. Yeah. And I've even thought about, so one of my friends and I are working on a the Echoloon project, and, and trying not to get into a copyright or trademark problem with, like, Project Loon that Google does, but, like, imagine mm -hmm. instead of waiting for a satellite or having to buy an air antenna, what if we just threw up a ton? Like, you guys in California just launch a bunch of balloons with repeaters on them. Um, okay. And just use a stock whip antenna that with a crossband like so like you could use just one radio with like a crossband like channel a is uhf channel b is vhf yeah um bay thing would do that and and you wouldn't you would be able to run through a repeater over a balloon and i really like high altitude balloons um yeah they just like tickle my fancy and if, i'm not trying to pull away from satellites because i, I do agree 100 percent satellites are are super awesome yeah, yeah um, of course. Yeah. But many like, options, many options. Yeah. Yeah. I've always had this idea of like what if there was a balloon QSO party and we just like launched a bunch of like floating balloons over the entire like US 
and yeah. then they come orbit back around, and if they're still working, like, you know. You mentioned um, balloons earlier, and just to clarify what you're talking about, a lot of people are releasing balloons with solar panel battery and, like, APRS, right? Yeah, Is that yeah. the hot thing? <clears throat> yeah. Or that's so, what they're doing, right? If you go to HabHub, H-A-B-H-U-B, okay. um, it's a it's a tracker of, of balloons, and I didn't give a moment. Let's see how many are on there right now. Oh. There well, I can, are... I'm going to cut you out for a second. You keep talking. Sure. Uh, I'm going to bring that up on... You keep going. You're still there, um, oh, audio-wise. Yeah. I'm just... I, I, okay, I pulled the website up. So it's H-A-B-H-U-B, right? Yep. Yep. So right now there is one, two, three, four, five four or five balloons in the air right now. Some of them are like, don't look like they're actually balloons or whatever. Um, oh, Tracker.habhub.org is the... Um, oh, that's so cool. Is the thing. So click on track. Yeah. That is what's happening. And, th and most of these are done by APRS, but there's a few that are um, doing using Whisper or RTTY sure. or HF. Really? So that they can Whisper. be tracked over the ocean. Um, ah. you know, like on 20 meters. But AD5 VC-11 has a balloon that launched around close to Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's a it's a standard balloon going up, and it's using APRS, and it's gonna pop a little bit northwest of Woodlawn, Louisiana. And you can see like the track, the trajectory it's gonna take. And um, I used this to track one of my friend's balloons, and I, I found it. I I, I put a bet on exactly where it was going to land, like within two miles, and I got within one mile. Wow. Um, just because it knows the wind aloft at any given moment. Right. And right now it's like a, what, like a hundred, two, yeah, two, 21 kilometers, whatever that is in miles, like 100,000 feet or more. I love that. All right. <laughs> um, well, for those that stuck on to towards the end of the show, this is a whole thing you could dive into to, oh, yeah. for the rest of the week and learn about this. <laughs> and that's, so, uh, how expensive would it be to launch a balloon? It is not that expensive. So, WB8ELK, he actually uses party balloons to launch his. Like Mylar super, balloons? Yeah, Mylar. But he has a super, super lightweight payload that is just a whisper beacon, and it, navigate, it circumnavigates the Earth. But wow. for an actual proper weather balloon like with um, that goes up and comes down like within you know a couple hours, I think the weather balloon is about 60 bucks. The helium is around 200 um, for for a full tank, so it's pretty pricey. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't recommend using hydrogen because it's flammable, <laughs> but it yeah. is really cheap. So yeah, you know, if you're really safe, you could pull it off. But I definitely don't recommend that. When you know, in a field of kids at a school, yep, that would be you know headline news in a heartbeat. Um, which you know, high altitude balloons are already headline news. Like the hypes of people up. Like there was, there's a story of of a guy um in. Uh, St. Louis or somewhere around here who launched a balloon and landed in Kentucky. And that's wow. the only thing that has happened, like this little town in Kentucky, the only thing that has happened of any newsworthy value in all of six months. So he drove in. They were like inspecting this balloon. It was like the balloon, God came. You know, yeah. The, yeah, and they got him on the local the news and they like town. brought him like gifts and like a cake and they had a party. And it was like, what? It's just a balloon. And these They made him mayor. Like, Not for a day. He's actually the mayor the now, folks. City. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, so that the helium is most expensive, but then you have like your payload, a styrofoam box with some Bay of Things and whatever you want to put in it, a Raspberry Pi, a camera. Um, like it, you can do use a GoPro, but those are expensive. But like yeah. you can go to Amazon and get like an action cam, which is the Chinesium the GoPro. Yeah, the Chinesium like copies. Um, um, but at the very said least, FAA approval. What's that like? So it's not really – it depends on where you launch it from, but it's like mm -hmm. you call the FAA or you call your local um, airport and you say, I'm going to launch a balloon at 10 o'clock tomorrow. And okay. Like, okay, where are you launching from? How long, you know, is it doing this and how high? And, and they put a – they put a not a T, not a restriction, but they put a NOTAM, like balloons may be flying in this area. Sure. Um, and one thing you can do to increase its radar cross-section is put a um, – get two pieces of – of like uh, cardboard, cover them in aluminum, and make a plus sign out of them, uh, or maybe make a diamond, and that acts like a really bright radar reflector. So if indicate sure. that you know a plane hits it, they can or a plane can see it from far away, or the air traffic control can see it from far away. But the fact of the matter is, like high altitude balloons are launched like many times a day by the weather service to do propagation sounding and, and ionospheric sounding and temperature sounding, um, not sounding. Um, measurement of like the atmosphere so that they can get 
winds aloft and do science and predict the weather. Like it's right. actually used in weather prediction. Yeah. So and they present really little risk to airplanes, but it is important you do notify FAA like your local airport, like your closest airport. Like I'm flying a balloon, watch out, you know, this time, etc. Cool. But, so to answer your question, I think he launched it for about a total of three hundred dollars. But once you nice. have like you know a big can of helium, I think that's good for maybe two or three launches. Oh, um, all right, okay. Uh, depending on how much you fill it, uh, right. Uh, and then all the payload, if you recover it, then you don't have that, you know, recurring cost. But if you lose it, then, you know, you lose it. But that's why you have APRS on it. Right. when it gets launched and when it gets caught up in a tree, it'll be eight, you know, 100 feet off the ground and it'll be hitting a digipeter eight miles away. So yeah, yeah. you can still, you can track it to the point. You'll know where it's uh, at. Yeah. And, and it, at the very least, you can see its last good packet will be, right. you know, less than a thousand feet above the ground. And you can see exactly where it lands. And you can do like a, a grid search and find it and make Wonderful. it big orange and bright and find it. And, Very cool. So, or put your phone number on on it, and eventually it'll it'll return. <laughs> yeah, parts will show up on eBay. Uh, well, Sterling, this has been amazing. I think yeah. it's been very helpful. Hopefully, it's helpful to the chat. Um, I'm gonna just say, if you have any questions, go ahead and hit him up on Twitter, or, or you know, all the things on his on his blog. What I'd like to do, have you back sometime. Sure. You know, when you go to these events, as things are coming up, either you know, let us know about them, and then when you go right. to them, come back maybe take some video or images and we can splash it on there while we're doing the talk that yeah. would be super fun i think because you know a lot of it's getting the word out because it's it seems like to me that at least with kid things for kids um the more parents you tell about those things the more they'll want to do them in their area yeah. nothing like parent like you know i'm a i'm a parent my and my wife's crazy about activities and when she hears about new interesting activities, if they're not already being done, she'll start the movement to, to make them happen. So working with parents is probably a good idea too. So, you know, mm -hmm. let's, yeah, let's see how we can we can cover some of that. Um, and I didn't even, you know, hit all the points about like the education, like, oh, yeah. like the league, like what they're doing, like education, they're, you know, training um, um, teachers to use ham radio in the schools. And they're also, I think they're, they've, they've done, I even forgot to mention collegiate amateur radio initiative, like that's happening. And those are young people too. Mm -hmm. That's been really successful. Um, there's a QSO party coming up for them and, and yep. et cetera. But cool. I think the ARRL is actually focusing now more on like the age 30 group and like parents group. Um, ah. Because, like I mentioned earlier, they have jobs, they need a hobby, right. um, they have a little more time on their hands, a little more money, so like they're going to be like a repay, like a recurring member, um, and if they get that, and if they have kids and they, you know, are passionate enough about their hobby, it, it right. trickles down, right? It it's like, down it's like, it's like cigarette brands. You get them addicted early, <laughs> and then they're just yeah. locked in. <laughs> um, I do want to give a shout out, Carrie, uh, Carrie, one of the patrons. She, I believe, is at the AWRL this week for that teacher symposium. Oh, cool. Yeah, so she's nice. – uh, make sure – Carrie, if you're watching this, make sure you take lots of pictures and post it on the crash course so we can see. Because I think – I already saw some of them on Instagram there. Um, the AWRL was reposting some of the stuff. They were doing like um, floating APRS beacons or something like that. It looked like it was really cool. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, Sterling, that was awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming out. And yeah. uh, everybody, again, go go visit him on his Twitter, Instagram, and, of course, his website, n0ssc.com. Do you have anything to plug before you go? Anything you want to leave with? Um, well, you pretty much knocked, you know, nailed, you know, hit whatever I'm trying to say. I'm starting to get tired. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, like 10 o'clock in, in my area. But, yeah, no, yeah, I also have a YouTube channel, and I've been wanting to start it up again, but you, doing YouTube is hard. I don't know how you do it, but um, I do have some videos on there of, like, some pretty helpful things, uh, yeah. and then check out Yark, Young, Young Amateur Radio Club, Yark World. Um, there's a QSO party coming up in September. I think it's actually on the contest calendar. Okay. Um, um, but you you can look at that. And there's also another September QSO party for the Collegiate Amateur Radio Initiative. And there's already rules out for that, like you work colleges, get points. Think of it like colleges on the air, um, if you will. Maybe maybe next year we'll have like youth on the air, kind of. Uh, you know, the big year-long activity. That would be, so, yeah, that's a, that's a really cool. good idea. You should talk um, to some of your friends I've, in ARRL. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have so many ideas, um, and we're really trying to get the ball rolling, And I'm, but I'm only one person, so how to really make this happen is from the ground up, grassroots style. Like, go to your club, start a youth committee, think about what you can do to get more youth in your club, um, c contact me, and, like, people like Carol Perry, KD, K, uh, WB2, MGP, and ARRL, um, they have, you know, a lot of resources as well. 
um, uh, to help with that. So yeah, um, that's about it. Cool. It's hey, um, yeah. Well, okay. I'll just leave it at that. It's been awesome. We went a little bit over, but it's awesome. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching everybody again, go check out coffee, uh, go join the crash course. If you have not already and check out the description for all those links and have fun Is prime day over. Have fun with prime day or have fun with the toys you purchased <laughs> for the rest of the <laughs> week. All right, guys, take it easy. We'll see you later. See you guys.